Well, it's the NCW Life Channel's preview of the high school football season. We've got Michael Don, the head coach for the Eastmont Wildcats, coming off a, a season a year ago that uh, I'm sure you had higher asp aspirations than what, what came of it. Uh, you lost a heartbreaker here at home in the playoffs against Richland. Uh, let's talk first about the offseason. How's it been? Uh, been a good offseason, good work out of the kids. Uh, you know, we averaged probably over 100 kids a day in the weight room all summer, and uh, our older guys – uh, put in work all off season. We have uh, 40, 50 kids that come every morning at 6:30 and work out. Um, then we have a bunch more who work out through the day and in classes. So uh, we're really excited about where we're at right now. We're a very senior laden team with a couple juniors sprinkled in, but uh, we got a lot of veterans, a lot of kids with a lot of experience, and uh, I think uh, our kids are excited and ready to get back out on the field. Well, and by the looks of it, uh, looking at social media on some of the camps and things like that, you've had some individuals that have really shined at some of these camps around the state. Yeah, a lot of guys have gotten around, traveled around. Uh, you know, Luke Gale had a great central camp for us. He ended up being the overall camp MVP there. Um, just has been throwing the ball really well. Uh, Gunnar Peterson's been traveling around. He's got a couple offers to play college football. So does Luke. Connor Prazier has some offers to play college football. Um, Adrian Ruffins will get some. Uh, you know, he was battling some stuff over the summer as far as back injury, so he didn't get to go to many camps. But um, he'll be a college football player. And uh, we're just really excited about this group of kids. They got some high-end talent with some uh, kids that just worked hard too. I know you lost a couple of key cogs on the offense defensive line from last season. It always starts up front for you guys. Uh, talk about that crew and, and how you're looking. I know a couple of years ago we were talking about how you had so many young guys that were getting playing time, and now they're seniors, and that's probably benefiting you, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we returned uh, three, three of our four defensive linemen up front, a uh, really good group, really athletic, um, probably the strongest defensive line we've ever had. Uh, we've got a, a really good group of old linemen who's just kind of gelling, a mix of juniors and seniors. Um, you know, Damian, returning starter, Ernie, returning starter, um, Mont, uh, Armando, Monty, uh, returning starter for us on the old line. So, you know, we got a mix of veterans trying to find a couple uh, guys who will step in, but uh, we feel like we got good depth there. But we're really excited about what we're capable up front. I know you've been working hard at, at creating this culture of, of the kids buying in and parents buying in, the community buying in. Sounds like that's happening. Did you have to work hard on this offseason, or was it more the seniors putting the pressure on everybody else? Um, you know, you always work, but best teams are always player run. And uh, I've tried to step back from always being the hammer and, and being the one who's getting after kids and finding them. So, you know, this offseason I put a lot more pressure on our captains where I'd say, hey, uh, I'm not seeing this kid. You guys got to find him, or this kid's not doing this. You guys got to take care of it. And so uh, our, our guys have done a much better job of taking ownership of the program themselves and holding everybody else accountable. Well, last year you played the same two teams. You're playing the first two games this year. You lost by a point to each of them. Um, as you look at this, the first two weeks, and suddenly it becomes a gauntlet where you're on the road, it sounds like, for those two weeks. Uh, talk about the matchup with Mead and with uh, Timberline right out of the gate. Uh, two really athletic programs. Um, Mead, they lost a lot of senior starters last year, but um, they had a really good JV, really good freshman team, so they got some talent coming. Uh, you know, really good community that's really into sports, um, and they got some kids who can play. And then uh, Timberline, they were pretty young last year, similar to us, and they got some guys who can fly around. They got some really good athletes. Uh, so we, we expect to have a couple good battles to start off the year. You got uh, Wenatchee in week three, uh, same as last year with the Bridges Sportsmanship. You guys have owned that for a long time now. I know you don't look ahead, but, I mean, that's your first big nine matchup. Yeah, always the goal, win that one. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, I expect Wenatchee to be much improved this year. They had a pretty young defense especially. Um, I think they're going to fly around and do some good things there. They have some good-looking kids, and um, I, I think they'll be real solid and a lot better than last year. So, you know, we got to make sure we're ready to go when we get to that one. So let's talk about the rest of the Big Nine. Who are you expecting to, to be those teams to challenge you? I think the top three pretty much stay pretty similar, Sunnyside and Moses Lake. Uh, Moses Lake is just uh, – Brett's done a phenomenal job over there with those, that group, and um, he's got a lot of buy-in right now. His son's going to be the, the signal caller, and uh, he got better last year as a freshman as the year went on, and I, I think they're going to be pretty explosive offensively. They return all their skill kids, and um, I think they're going to be really good. And, and Sunnyside just is always that team that's just – 
the kids play hard, they're scrappy, and they're always in the mix at the end of the year, top of the big nine. Moses Lake uh, probably rivals you guys for speed. I mean, you got a lot of team speed, but that, that's going to be fun to watch that track meet. Very well could be a track meet. They got some guys who can fly. We got some guys who could fly. Uh, should be a fun one. Last year was a pretty explosive game, too, so I expect to see something similar. We saw the progression for Luke uh, those first couple of games out of the box, kind of struggled a little bit, but he got better and better as the season went on, and you talked about his summer. How do you balance that when you got so much speed in the backfield? I know you guys like to run the football and control it, but when you got a, a gun like that back there, how do you balance that? You know, we got a couple uh, wings who um, could probably play receiver too, you know, and, and a lot of people ask, you know, why don't you go spread? You got kids who can go spread. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, we probably could spread with the group we have as seniors right now. But, um, you know, now you're looking to start back over every year. And uh, we're just trying to adapt what we do to the kids we have. So, uh, you know, you're going to see Peyton um, guests stretching the field vertically, Landon uh, Moore stretching the field vertically at uh, wing. And uh, those guys just add another dimension to our passing game off the play action. And, um, you know, Adrian Ruffins is back. He, he looks the part. He flies. He's big body. And then uh, Jace Travato has had an unreal offseason. Um, he was uncoverable at camp. He just tore it up. And, uh, you know, Jackson West has always been Mr. Reliable for us out there. He catches everything. And, uh, you know, we expect those guys to have a big year. We uh, just had the team having some fun behind us. That seems to be a constant for you guys. I mean, yeah, there's work to be done, but you like the kids also to have some fun. Absolutely. You know, one of the things is, you know, we want to hold kids accountable. Um, we hold our kids to a pretty high standard, but uh, it is a game. It is fun. And we try really hard to allow them to still have their personalities. Uh, I'm not going to run it militaristically. Um, there's nothing wrong with that style of program. It just doesn't fit my personality. Uh, I want our kids to have a personality, have fun, um, goof around a little bit. It's time to work. It's time to work. But, you know, when it's not, play, have fun, and enjoy the moments. I know you like to have the team kind of be in charge and, and lead things, so you've got a big senior class. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of goals have they set? Uh, you know, I think this year we want to win another Big Nine title. That's always the goal uh, is to get to that point, get in the playoffs. And then uh, we want to win a playoff game. You know, we've, we've been in the mix. We get to the playoffs. Uh, you know, I think we've had a couple rough draws where we got out, out physical, out matched in a couple of rounds. And, um, you know, I think this year physically, I think we'll match up better with a lot of teams. I thought last year uh, physically we could have matched up with some teams. Um, we just, you know, struggled a little bit with some little things. Being in a gym for seven weeks was not easy on the tackling. <laughs> Um, by the time this airs, you're going to be a new dad. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And Thank you. So how does that, you know, you're thinking about that balance of being dad and, and being coach and being teacher and, and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, thank goodness I usually don't take a lot of days off, so I got a lot of sick days saved up. So um, I'll, be taking, uh, I'll be taking Fridays off through the season from school to be at home with my wife, and then I'll be taking some mornings off early um, right after we have our little girl and uh, to be home and help her out. And I'm lucky I got a student teacher this fall who happens to be one of our football coaches. So that makes it really easy. Um, he's already been involved in the weight room. He knows what we do. He knows the kids. So uh, the kids will kind of take that and run with it. And that'll be a seamless transition for us. Okay, I got to ask you, since you knew a girl beforehand, yep. then did you have the whole gender reveal thing? Yeah, we did. Yep. And, that. and how, how did that go? Uh, you know, I, I knew it was coming. I, and my mom had all boys. And so my brothers have had girls so far and I just kind of assumed it was, it was in the card. So a uh, little girl, it is exploding pink balloon or what uh, was the reveal? A little cannon thing scared the heck out of our dogs. <laughs> dogs took off running. They didn't like it. All right, coach. Well, have a great season. Keep everybody healthy. Thank you very much. All right, there you go. Michael Don joining us here as we preview the upcoming season here on the NCW Life Channel. And we'll have Eastmont football quite a bit right here on the NCW Life Channel.